Hi, and welcome to section 6. In this section, we're going to learn about one of the most dangerous vulnerabilities that can affect web applications, SQL injection. In the previous section, we learned about the different authentication methods, and we created a password brute forcing tool. In this section, we're going to start by learning what is SQL injection, and how it works. Then, we are going to learn how to detect a SQL injection, and automate it with Python. Then, we're going to see how we can exploit the detected vulnerability and automate the actions we want to perform. Finally, we're going to learn how to detect blind SQL injection. Now we move on to the first video of this section that introduces what is SQL injection vulnerability. We're going to start explaining what is SQL injection vulnerability, explain how it works, and then we're going to learn about the differences between SQL injection and blind SQL injection. What is SQL injection? It is a type of input manipulation vulnerability. As the name suggests, it is a vulnerability where the attacker manipulates the web application in order to inject arbitrary SQL code into the application database. This vulnerability affects mainly web applications that use DBs to store and retrieve data. Nowadays, most of the web applications use a DB. Thus, the amount of web apps affected by this vulnerability is huge. The main cause for this problem is that the web application uses data that is coming from an untrusted source to dynamically construct a SQL query. If the injection is successful, attackers can Extract arbitrary data. Insert tampered data into the database. Bypass authentication authorizations and access controls. Take control of the server by executing OS commands. As you can see, it allows you to do a lot of things in the web application, which for an attacker is pretty good. Imagine we have a login form on our web application. This login form will be handled by our server-side code that will obtain the username and password from the post content. It will be assigned to the variables, the name and pass. Then these two variables will be used to dynamically construct the SQL statement. When our users provide valid usernames and passwords, like admin and superroot, the login will be successful. But what will happen if a user provides special characters and structure to his input? Let's imagine the same example. But this time, the attacker will insert a single quote or 1 equals 1 as the name and password. What will happen here? The resulting SQL query is valid. It will return all rows from the table users, since where 1 equals 1 is always true. This means that it will return all the results in the user's table. In the case of this login screen, it will log the attacker in with the first users of the table. Many times, the first user is admin, except if there are some users called Aaron, Anshal, etc. When a web application is vulnerable to an SQL injection, but the results of the injection are not visible to the attacker, it's called blind SQL injection. Admins, developers and frameworks are handling errors in order to avoid leaking information. When no results or errors are visible to the attacker, we still have some methods that could help to exploit the SQL injection in a blind way. The first method is called Boolean. This method is based on injecting payloads that alter the outcome of the original query, which results in different returned page content. The other method is time-based. This method is based on injecting payloads that trigger a delay time for the SQL server while processing our query, which in turn slows down the response time of our request. We're going to learn more about these techniques in more detail later. In this video, we have learned what is a SQL injection vulnerability, how it works, what is a blind SQL injection, and what methods we have to deal with with blind SQL injection. In the next video, we're going to learn how to detect SQL injections and automate the task with Python.